Good morning. We've just woken up. Paul's just gone out for a little break and um, it's about seven o'clock. Couldn't show you where we actually pitched last night because it was dark. It was about ten o'clock when we got here so we had to walk after the pub and find a little place. Um, but we were, we were gifted with moonlit skies so it was really easy to see without head torches which was just like really nice. We found this really nice place with grass. I don't know, it seems like a field, but there's nothing really growing in it, so God knows. Very calm night. Neither of us slept very well, but that's just because like, we're not used to being in the tent at the moment. I have to get back into the swing of things, I think. So we're going to get up now, we're going to have a cup of tea, pack the tent away, and get moving, and then we've decided we'll have our breakfast a little bit later, because neither of us are very hungry right now. So that's the direction we came from last night. We walked in from there. There's some kind of, I don't know, like manure pile or something. And that's a footpath that goes straight up. And here we, we found our little spot. Back in the Hillberg Nano. Very comfortable, very warm tent. It's absolutely covered in dew this morning. You can see, it's like glistening with water. It's also quite wet on the inside so anything that was touching the inner liner tent last night got has got wet basically Paul having his coffee morning Paul morning. so yeah I'm gonna have a cup of tea as well now and then we're gonna pack up and go So we had that was that's the entrance to our field where we're staying. <laughs> so we're just slowly getting ourselves ready, and then a truck pulls up, like one of those big kind of Range Rover things. Then a uh, so the, some guys get out and they start like getting in tractors and driving into the field. <laughs> so, honestly, this is my biggest nightmare of, of wild camping that the farmer just drives a big tractor in the field and starts spreading muck on you or something like that. Didn't get mud, muck or anything on us, but uh, we definitely got caught. And the guy, the guy that was, uh, was driving this big tractor at the entrance to the field, God, this is muddy here, just sitting there texting, probably texting his boss, the farmer, I don't know. God. A bit of adrenaline killed the pain in my knees anyway, so that's good. So we're now going to just, we're actually not on the Pedars Way at all. We're off it because we, we're in between the Pedars Way and the little village of Hartley. And um, we were very tired last night, so we just looked for the first spot that we could, you know, it was a bit flat that we could put the tent on. So I just realised I'm like filming into the sun, aren't I? Oops. All right. Talk to you later. We've just come across another stone. This one's also got writing on it. Let's see if I can read it. It says, oops, I'm a little bit into the sun here, aren't I? From Blackwater Car to Seagate since the plough first broke the bread of land. What does that say? Pitelets? <laughs> Pitels? Yeah, pitals and pieces, plots and past, yeah, pastures to ever, oh, every man, stony path? No, st what's that say at the bottom? Stony, stony acre. Stony acre. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Do you know what that means? I think it's just describing the land, working the land and stuff. Oh, look, there's a fox. Gosh, I haven't seen a fox in ages. What a treat. Hmm. The path is pretty muddy around here. Can't work out why, because we didn't have any rain yesterday. I suppose it rained a couple of days back, but it's just a lot of water sitting around. There's a lot of farm machinery coming up and down here. They seem to be doing things on the fields a lot at the moment. Just 
stopping for a bit of breakfast, got the stove going. It's not the most idyllic spot. We're just on the lane, basically. Um, Paul's having to put some KT tape on his feet. He's getting a little bit sore feet and blisters and things. Because um, we did, I think we've done 18 miles really yesterday. 16 to 18. We're not exactly sure how how long. So yeah, have a nice cup of tea, a nice bit of um, bit of porridgey breakfast. That should set us up for a while, and then we we're going to carry on. Paul's drying the tent out because we had to leave in such a rush earlier, so everything was just sopping wet with the dew. You can see how quickly they're drying. We've got a nice little breeze here, nice and warm in the sun. Just done a washing up. I just washed my face, cleaned my teeth, put sun cream on. It just feels so much better. So yeah, looking like a proper person again now. And got a full belly, had a nice cup of tea. So now we're just gonna sort of slowly pack our things up and, um, and start moving on again. Yeah. This is the highest point on the Pedars Way. Is it? Yeah. It's like a little trick point. <laughs> so we're on this road stretch now. Three miles we've got on the road and then we arrive at Castle Acre. Um, not terribly impressed. There's no side bit to walk on as such. The cars go really fast when they come along. Three miles is a really long time to be walking on a road, so never mind. The wind is quite chilly, so I had to put my hat on because I was starting to get earache. But um, apart from that, we're feeling pretty good. We're looking forward to getting to Castle Lake. We're going to treat ourselves to some lunch when we get there. Oh, sounds like there's a car coming. Let's step up on the verge again. And then afterwards, then afterwards we're gonna um, just carry on walking and find somewhere nice to sleep when it's the right time. It's a really nice relaxing day. Just got our first glimpse of Castle Acre. You can see a church over there and some buildings. We're very excited because we found that there's going to be a pub there and um, they do lots of vegetarian and vegan options which I'm delighted about because notoriously I found eating out in Norfolk there's not that many vegetarian options weirdly enough I don't know why but yeah so looking forward to some food and um, now we're not on the road we're next to the road which is a relief so we're actually been walking behind this hedge which is also acting as a kind of windbreak the wind is coming from the left there and it's pretty strong today it's getting stronger and stronger so we're in a pub called the ostrich in castle acre paul's just gone off to refill our water bottles we're now waiting for some tasty food and it's such a pretty place. We're gonna in, really enjoy just hanging around here for an hour or two before we carry on. We're not sure where we're gonna to stay tonight. We're just going to possibly try and walk another four or five miles this afternoon. And when we feel like stopping or when it's the right time, we'll just stop. Um, feels like a real holiday doing it this way. You know, there's no pressure to go to a, a place that you've got booked, like a bed and breakfast or anything. You're just like literally so free you can go wherever you want you've got we've got everything we need the only restriction slight restriction that we've got is stopping for places to to find water but if we walk another five miles basically the next stops on the route for water there's a kind of junction with a mcdonald's and a garage a petrol garage so we can get water there um, and then tomorrow we're passed by water and we'll probably end up in another pub in water to be honest. This is the Bailey Gate that we're now walking through. 
leaving Castle Acre, Ostrich Pub over that way, and we get to go down this very pretty little street here and hopefully get a view of the castle down there. This is the castle at Castle Acre, or the ruins of it anyway, we're just having a look around. So it's got two main features of Castle Acre. Sorry about the wind in the mic, it's hard to avoid the gusts. It's got, uh, it's got this castle and then I think we're going to just see the Priory afterwards. The path goes past the Priory so we should be able to get quite a good view of it, fingers crossed. Lovely sunny weather so we can enjoy seeing it properly. We're both feeling quite sleepy now after the nice big lunch in the pub. So we're just going to walk as far as we feel like going, I think, which might not be very far, actually. <laughs> there it is. Maybe we can get through the gap here. Ah, look, there's the Priory. Looks like they're doing some renovation on it or something. So this is the River Nar with the Priory in the background. We've just been sat for a few minutes on this little bench. It's very relaxing watching the water. This would be ideal in summer to just have a paddle in and have a little freshen up of your feet. We didn't do it because the water's absolutely freezing because it's March. So what we've decided to do is um, we're scoping out this little space behind me. There's a kind of patch of land that is, how can I explain this? So where we were walking, you can see those trees down there. Um, basically there's a little road down there and that is the Pedals Way, so on the other side. And um, we were looking for a place that's going to be suitable for us without having to wait until it's really, really late. So I think it's because we're walking on the road and it's looking like the path is on the road for quite some time. It's a little bit tricky to find a place when you're right next to the road. So we've decided to sort of tramp around the side of this little wooded area. We found this stretch of grass here. We've got about an hour until sunset now. So we're just gonna kind of relax in the freezing cold wind, you know, as you do. And then when it gets a little bit closer to, to darkness, we're going to pitch the tent um, and get all cosy. That's the idea. Okay, so this is our final setup for the evening. So we've got a lovely field over there, nice view. The wind is coming from where I'm standing, as you can see. It's kind of squashing the tent a lot, but luckily we've got a pretty strong tent. And... Uh, yeah, I think the trouble is the ground's quite soft, so it was pulling the pegs out, so we've had to put like stones onto on the top of the pegs in the hope that they're not going to just rip themselves out in the night. It's a little bit narrow for midnight toilet breaks, but I think it will be fine. It'll be nice and comfortable. We've got a nice soft cushion underneath with the grass.